everybody, this is Professor Guppy, and this is a walkthrough video for Chapter 15 on Speaking to Inform. Now, what we're going to cover in here is going to be what informative speeches are, the different types, and give you some examples of, of those different types, along with some guidelines to help you put these together. Keep in mind, the guidelines will include videos. You need to see those by going to the slides themselves, okay? So, first thing, what is an informative speech? Well, these are speeches that are designed to convey knowledge and understanding to the audience. You're not trying to change anybody's mind. That's persuasion, and we're going to get there. Informative speeches come in several different types. You can inform your audience about objects, about processes, and you've already done that one with your how-to. You can inform your audience about events, or you can also inform them about concepts. What they all have in common here, remember, designed to convey knowledge and understanding of the subject. So, looking at our four types here, let's take them one at a time. An informative speech about an object deals with anything that is visible, tangible, or stable in form. This will include, think of them as nouns, people, places, and things, okay? For instance, in this one, where you're doing a speech on the Mississippi River, the specific purpose would be to inform my audience about the geographical regions of the Mississippi River. It's very different where it begins up in the upper Midwest than it is from, say, the Delta. The central idea would extend on that. The Mississippi River is divided into three sections, each with its own unique features. Let's look at the main points here. We've divided it into three sections. So we're going to have the upper Mississippi, the middle Mississippi, and then the lower Mississippi. And each one of these is developed into its own main point. Not that difficult. Don't try to make it hard, okay? One that's going to be a review for you would be a process speech. A systematic series of actions leading to the specific result. These are your how-tos, sometimes called demonstration speeches. Let's look at this one. Specific purpose here to inform my audience of the common methods used by stage magicians to perform their tricks. Central idea, this speech is going to talk about two common methods that are used, mechanical devices and sleight of hand. Look at your main points here. We know we have two of them because, again, look back at that central idea. Two common methods. First is going to be mechanical devices. Second is going to be sleight of hand. So the first one, many magic tricks rely on mechanical devices that may require little skill by the magician. Second, other magic tricks depend on the magician's skill in fooling people by sleight of hand manipulation. Then, of course, as you develop the whole speech, you're going to have subpoints in here. You'll have your intro and your conclusion. Everything that you already know how to do from your how-to. An event speech is going to inform your audience about anything that happens or is regarded as happening. For example, this would be a great one if you want to talk about holidays or festivals. So the example they give here is a festival from Japan the Oban Festival. Central idea, well, what is this festival famous for? Lanterns, historic dances, and graveside gatherings. Look, you got three points. We know that. Look at the central idea. So the first one is going to talk about paper lanterns. The second, historic dances. The third will deal with graveside gatherings. Again, we know that from the way the central idea is structured. So far, so good. The last one, concept speeches, can be a little more difficult because you're dealing with things like belief, theory, ideas, notions, principles. You're still informing, you're not persuading. Look at this example here. This one is going to be about nonviolent resistance. The basic principles of nonviolent resistance stress using moral means to achieve social change, first point, refusing to inflict violence on one's enemies, second point, and using suffering as a social force, third. So we see the major points 
are based on how you have it set up in the central idea. From here, the chapter will go into these videos, which I am not going to play here. It'll make this whole thing too long. I really suggest you watch them when you go through the slides themselves. When you, when you get to informative speaking guidelines, don't overestimate what the audience knows. Really don't. Just because you know it inside out does not mean your audience does. Make sure you relate the subject to your audience. Give them a reason to listen to you. Don't be overly technical. Avoid your abstractions. Personalize those ideas and be creative. You will have an example video of relating to the audience. You will also have examples of personalizing ideas. You will have an example of being creative. And last, you will have an example of a sample speech going all the way through. Now, that's the end of this chapter. Keep in mind, you're going to be putting together a biographical speech for me. All the details will be given to you in plenty of time. I need you to come to me with questions. Do not cross the line over into persuasion, okay? You're just trying to inform. Thank you very much. Bye.